Okay, finally, everyone's here. Everyone who's anyone is now here. We're usually incredibly well organized, but um, this is, we were, well, I mean, we're expecting a lot of people, but this is just overwhelming and absolutely fantastic. Um, my name is Fatima Uygun. I'm the, uh, one of the directors of the Govan Hill Bars Community Trust. I'm the treasurer. Um, so please donate some of your coppers and church money into the buckets that people are taking around so we can continue opening up the stages of the pool. But Mr. Andrew Johnson, who's the chair, will be talking to you more about the developments um, with this building a, a bit later on. I just want to say how overwhelmed and emotional I was to see the news reports uh, last night uh, because it's actually been uh, almost 11 years, uh, it will be 11 years in March, when some parents, mainly mothers, chained themselves to the sun lounges, um, we had sun lounges in here, um, and refused to leave on the 21st of March when they closed the pool for, well, officially closed the pool uh, finally. And those housewives and mothers and parents and members of the community refused to leave the building and we just squatted and we stayed here. And that started 141 days of occupation. The occupation that's, that went on for 141 days was not new um, to community campaigns like ours or to working class areas like Govan Hill. It's part of a tradition that we're actually proud to be uh, part of. And it showed not just the people of Govan Hill, but the people of Glasgow that if you really want to save a building that you believe is yours, what you do is you try and take it over. And, and we tried to do that for 141 days and we kept this building immaculate and we looked after it and nurtured it, but those loathsome and vile sheriff's officers turned up at four in the morning and with 100 police officers and kicked us out. And for many in the council, not naming anyone, but for many in the council, there was a sigh of relief, I'm sure, that they'd finally beaten the Govan Hill, Govan Hill pool protesters. But for us, it wasn't the beginning of the end, but it was actually the beginning. And this is now a testament to not only the campaigners involved in the Govan Hill Baths, but to the local community who've shown us enormous amount of support. Uh, there are a lot of people here who I recognise from the picket lines, from people who've donated money and have volunteered over those last 10 years. A testament really to how much this pool and this building is loved by the local community. So without further ado from me, I want to say thank you to everybody on behalf of the Governor Hill Baths Community Trust and hopefully not long, you'll be able to bring your water wings and your towels and have a swim because this pool, as the choir sang, is your pool and it's our pool. So I'm going to pass you on now to, well, I have to tell you, when we said we were opening up the pool, we had letters from all over the country saying, can we open it, can we open it? We said, no, we want Peter Mullen. Because Peter <laughs> Mullen uh, has been a long time, and he was a local lad here for a long time, and has been a, a tremendous supporter of the Govan Hill Baths Community Trust. So please put your hands together again for Peter Mullen. Thanks, Dan. Um, I find that really hard to believe. Please. Brad Pitt wants to open Govan Hill Baths. No, we want Peter Mullen. He lives down the road. He gets a number five bus and just jumps straight off. Um, I'll, not, I'll not make this long because obviously some guy will come out holding my towel up. Um, as used to happen in the old days, if you were late coming out the bath, the guy was bringing out your towel. And if you were two minutes too long getting out the pool, he'd stick it in the pool. And you were totally screwed. So you had to run around your mates. And they had these wee tiny kiddie towels. So you had to run around your mates sharing their towel to try and get the water off you before you actually went up the road. Baltic freezing. Um, any road. I, this is just delightful. And it's fantastic. I, my, uh, we lived in Allison Street before we got posh and moved up to Nidri Square. <laughs> it's still Govan Hill, but we like to call it Strad Bungo. Um, this was where I taught Mary to swim. And I loved this place, and I couldn't believe when they shot it. And, and I was all the more inspired by the campaign to keep it open. And I was one of those shallow ones that walked by with their wains and put a little bit of money in and then buggered off to his nice warm bed. Um, well, the good folk, men, women, and children, actually kept this occupation going. And to keep this for that length of time, and I know there must have been periods, particularly in the mid-2005, uh, 2006, when hope must have been getting pretty thin on the ground, as it were. 
I think it's absolutely amazing that you've actually got to this point to phase one of what should be the most amazing facility for the, the good people of Govan Hill. So complete, total admiration and congratulations. Thank you. Next is um, no stranger to anyone here. She's our local um, member and she has been a supporter of the Govan Hill Baths even before she was elected. Um, and there's a picture of her somewhere with one of our directors 10 years ago 10 years ago, standing out there, um, and she's been at virtually everything we've had, and she's been a tremendous supporter. Please put your hands together for Nicola Sturgeon. Thanks very much, Fatima. I, I now have a task for this morning, which is to find that photograph and <laughs> confiscate it, because I, I don't want MD seeing a photograph from 10 years ago. When Peter, and big thanks to Peter for being here today, he's helping make a very special day even more special. But when he was talking about the guy that used to come in when you were out of time and hold up your towel, I had a sudden flash into the future. Uh, and the image in my mind was of Andrew Johnson performing that role <laughs> in the, the years to come. So you heard it here first. This is a, a really, really amazing, emotional, fantastic, special. I, I can't think of uh, all the words to describe it. It's such a great day for Govan Hill. And my task here today, because I, I don't think politicians really uh, are the ones that should be up here in the limelight today. Uh, my task today is to say thank you to all of you, really, because today would not have happened without the Save Our Pool campaign. Uh, and huge thanks to people like Fatima and Andrew and all the others who formed that campaign and who refused to let it die. I, I literally, literally have lost count of the number of times over the years I've been lobbied by Andrew and others, and they are, believe me, tenacious uh, people, but that tenacity is what has delivered this amazing achievement today. So well done, and thank you to all of you. And secondly, thank you to the community. You know, Govan Hill often gets talked about for the wrong reasons. Govan Hill has got big challenges. I would be the last to pretend otherwise, but Govan Hill is a fantastic community with such fantastic people and fantastic potential. And what this community has demonstrated over the last 11 years is the characteristic that will make Govan Hill great again, that never say die spirit, that fantastic community spirit that said, this place should never have closed at all, but when it did, that refusal to give up to give in that determination to see it open again. Today is brilliant, but it is only the first phase. And make no mistake, you will have my 100% support for the next phase of the restoration of this fantastic facility. So that the next time we're here for an opening, we'll all be splashing about in the pool. Andrew will be holding up the towels and we'll be able to celebrate the end of the journey. But this is a great staging post along the way. So well done, everybody, and enjoy what is a tremendous day for Govan Hill. Thanks very much. Thank you, Nicola. Next, we've got Archie Graham. Um, Archie Graham is the Deputy Leader of Glasgow City Council, and for most of you, will probably know that we haven't had the closest friendship with Glasgow City Council for a long time, and we've been mortal enemies, but that has now changed, and the Glasgow City Council have been incredibly supportive um, in the last couple of years, and have, um, together with city building and so on, have helped us, really, to where we are now. So please, put your hands together for Archie Graham. Thanks very much. Delighted to be here to lend support from Glasgow City Council. I checked and made sure that the pool wasn't yet open before agreeing to come for fear of being thrown into the thing. Um, I actually have very fond memories of uh, this place. Uh, I come from the Gorbals, uh, a very far away place that you may know of, uh, to the north of here. Uh, I come from there and when Gorbals pool was closed, I learned to swim in Gorbals swimming baths. And when that was closed, we had to walk all the way up here to come to this swimming pool. And we thought it was miles and miles away, because we were only that size at the time. We thought it was the end of the earth. And we thought it was where all the posh people lived as well. People owned their own houses and everything up here. It was very strange to us. And I spent many years uh, coming here uh, to engage in all sorts of activities. Some of them permitted by the Jani and some of them 
not uh, so welcomed by the janitor. I do remember getting hit with a wet towel uh, by, by the person uh, who was in charge of making sure you never overstayed your welcome in the, in, in the pool. It's a fantastic uh, day for everybody, not just in Govan Hill, but in Glasgow, uh, I think, today. Um, the City Council um, is uh, about to launch a consultation exercise on what we call community asset transfer. There was a day when everybody, I remember when I was wee, uh, we expected the council to run everything and to provide every service for everyone. Um, these days are gone, folks. Glasgow City Council has had £100 million taken out of its budget last year, this year and next year. £100 million less we've got to provide services over a three-year period. That's some amount of money. and We can't possibly provide the same level of services as we used to. So how do we do things differently? Well, one, one way of doing it is to transfer assets like this to the community, to the people who know the place and who, who, who occupy this place and have been working very hard to get us to this phase, phase one, uh, and, and will work equally hard, I'm sure, to get phases two and three uh, put in place. The City Council will do everything uh, that it can to help you in that regard. I'm here uh, to make sure that everybody in here knows that Glasgow City Council stands four square with the community here in Govan Hill. Thanks very much. Thanks, Archie. Um, is Joe McFadgen here? Joe McFadgen was um, scheduled to speak, but he hasn't been well. Joe McFadgen is the actual man who threw the towels in the actual water. He was the superintendent here for over 20 years, a smashing bloke, but he's been a bit unwell recently. We're hoping he'd be here. He's not. Um, but we'll, we'll no doubt send him um, our warmest wishes. Finally, the man who I stood shoulder to shoulder on the picket line with for, and so, Nicholas here, so many people here have turned up uh, for all those years, uh, is our chair, um, uh, Mr Andrew Johnson. Probably you all saw him on the TV recently. Put your hands together for a dedicated campaign. Thanks a lot. The first thing to say is that, Nicola, we will not confiscate the photograph. It will be put in our archives and be brought out when it appropriate. Uh, yeah, I, as chair of the organisation, what a magnificent, what a fantastic and emotional day for all of us because for so many people to have come out today to celebrate what for us has been an 11 year long, long journey, a journey that has taken this 11 years, but of course it's, it's, only just, it's only just really begun. You know, with apologies to Peter in his most recent uh, uh, film, can I remind people that there was once another famous horse, a Trojan horse. You all know the story of the Trojan horse, and the Trojan horse, of course, was where the warriors, I won't go into a history lesson, but the warriors, uh, 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 in fact, spent 10 years burying themselves in the body of a large horse and pushing them in through the walls of a city so that they could pretend that they were a gift, but in actual fact, when they got in the city, they dropped down and inside they were able to wreak mayhem and get what they wanted. Now, I wouldn't compare us to a, a Trojan horse, but I would certainly say there's a similarity insofar as we had to occupy, we had to occupy, we had to work in a way uh, that was actually surreptitious, that we, we, we fought for four or five years and finally found a way, we finally found a way of getting back into this building. So here is our horse. Here's our Trojan horse. We're coming out now, and you've come out in great numbers to join the battle and join the fights to keep them open. So enthusiastic are you that I know you'll all be looking very quickly for the black bins that will be, we hope, loaded with uh, all you can possibly manage to put inside as fundraising. Uh, this is an occasion, of course, it gets a bit boring because there are names involved. Normally we don't mention names, but on this occasion, everybody here will forgive me if I spend a few minutes just mentioning just a few people, and I know I'm going to miss people out, but even so, we wouldn't be here without them. First of all, of course, is, 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 is our board members, both past and present, Fatima and Francis and Donnie and Danny and Jean and Alex and Alan and Amar Anwar, uh, uh, and recently uh, John McCann and uh, uh, one other. Uh, in addition to that, in <laughs> Sophie, thank you, <laughs> Sophie, <laughs> uh, thanks to all of those, of course. Uh, before then, Nicola Fisher was here, she was a board member, uh, only, only moved on recently because of the huge amount of work she does in other ways for the city, and that is most important as well. In addition to that, of course, 
we have been hugely reliant, reliant in recent times on people like Patrick and Yasmin and Nick uh, uh, and a whole bundle of other people who have made this event work and will make the next event work. Put it in your diary, 25th of February, here at 7 o'clock. We're launching a film that was made. Look on our website to get details of that. A film that will be in the Glasgow Film Festival, by the way, over the next couple of weeks. But people like Inga from the charity shop and Tricia from the charity shop uh, and Karen, our bookkeeper, and Harry, and Harry, a volunteer for us, and Kaylee, uh, 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 our administrative assistant, our present, our present manager of our Centre for Community Practice, Dr. Helen Ross, and before that, Dr. Uh, 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 Heather Lynch, who was the manager of our Centre for Community Practice. The, their qualifications give an indication of how highly regarded are, how highly regarded we are, and how people want to work for us. Uh, and hopefully, many more will continue to do so. We've just appointed a government-funded uh, intern to do social research work for us for six months as well. So I started by saying we were starting a journey. Well, of course, now that was the first bit. We've gone through the first bit, as Nicola was alluding to. We're now moving to the second part of the journey. The second part of the journey is really all about funding. It's about people. It's about people coming here. It's about you folks coming here, probably as often as you possibly can to join in our activities. That's why I said the 25th of February, come along and pay your loot and help that event go successfully. But now's the time to say some more thank yous. It's to say a big thank you to people like Nord Architecture, without whom we would not... <clears throat> Nord Architecture, in fact, joined us eight years ago when we first appointed some people to do a a business plan and a feasibility study of the area. The, the transformation of this front suite is down to them. I wouldn't want to start to add up the amount of pound notes that there would be involved in the sponsorship that has led to planning permission, building warrant, all the drawings for this place, and goodness knows what else besides, and of course the design and the temporary reconstruction of this front suite. So, so to, to Alan Pert and Michael Hughes, my goodness me, we would not be here without you, that's for sure. So I'd like to join everyone to join in a special applause for them. <clears throat> After that, of course, in most recent times, we, we have to thank, I'm not, I'm not going to thank Nicola for, personally for this, because it's nothing to do with her. She doesn't have a hand in funding. Uh, but in the funding side of it, the £70,000 we were given to set up our Centre for Community Practice set this whole process in motion. We couldn't have had a programme working here without a, quite, a pretty well-paid job that would help that, help that go along. Uh, thereafter, of course, the money that made this place while you're standing here came from the government's community health pilot project, and we had £100,000 uh, from that project. But, you know, that wasn't just from them. The Govan Hill Community Action Group, comprising of 23 organisations locally that meets regularly, when it had 200,000 to spend on the community in a new programme of devolving of funds, which we hope will continue in bigger proportion from the council as well as from the government, uh, they sat around a table for four or five months and met monthly for four or five months, and they still meet, of course, and decided half of that money, half of the 200,000 pounds, should be committed to making a community space for, to begin the process of opening the baths. So that was the next big tranche of money. But it doesn't end there because, you see, back to Archie and the council, the, the DRS and the help they gave us in putting a business plan together, the work of uh, uh, City Property and Gordon Smith in particular, who's worked with us fastidiously, carefully, sometimes with and sometimes against the council's best interests, I suspect, but he's got us there. He sends an apology, and I want to mark that apology today because it's a great pity the date was set before he had a, another commitment a long time ago. So, Gordon, up in the Highlands, thanks for what you've done here. And then, of course, just to run through the final list, we would have to talk, we'd have to talk about the funding we had from Big, from Big Lottery, uh, from the Community Funding Scotland, from the Santander Bank, from the Glasgow City Council Area Committee, and, and, and much else besides. So quite, hmm? so I'm just coming to that. Uh, <laughs> And much else besides. Most recently, most recently, two big accolades. One is that we've applied successfully to carry the kite mark of the Commonwealth Games. So we now carry the kite mark of the Commonwealth Games legacy. P 
pity we couldn't have got it a bit earlier because it could have gone on our literature, but never mind. We hope that will take us forward, and um, we, know Ar we know Archie is very much involved with that. In fact, Archie, I think, is responsible for the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, so maybe, maybe we can... Uh, 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 <laughs> maybe... Maybe we can change the literature that says we don't give funding, but we'll help you get some. Maybe we can change the words around somewhere uh, in that. And, of course, uh, finally, the big accolade this week that came was the we applied for £980,000 from Historic Scotland. They have now said that they will give us funding. It's not to say we're going to get that much money, I'm anxious, I'm anxious to say, but we are now used their kite mark, and it's on the literature that you've got, to have Historic Scotland committed to having this pool open again is a major boost because they protect the historic and social legacies of the whole of the country. So to Historic Scotland, and I'll mention a name again from the council, Liz Davidson, who's in charge of planning. She's pushed this along with <coughs> me. <coughs> she's pushed this along with Alan Nord, our architect, to make sure this starts to happen. So there's a huge tranche of money coming to make sure this building is watertight and well equipped to start the work inside to uh, begin the process of the different phases. Uh, the phases are actually on the last... I'm not going to go into them here now because of time. I've gone on long enough. But the phases are in the drawings there. Have a look at that and you'll see what we've got planned. But we're hoping that in 18 months to two years' time, you will swim here again. Thank you very much.